Grip score 11, nothing left. Time to close out another stone burner win real quick. Finish it off, rock and roll. Go in the body press. Yup. Iron hands take us home. Let's go. That's a good win. Love to see it. Survive in advance, rock and roll. Stone Turner is rolling, baby. Love to see it. Hi, I'm Dan of Dan Squared, and in this video, I'm going to show you my Stone Turner build and the team that I built around Stone Turner for ranked battles. After that, I'm going to show you the team in action. So let's get right into it and look at the team. This is the case for Stone Journer. Here's a high level view of the team. Based around using Stone Journer to power up its ally, we have two fast attackers in Goldengo and Dragonite. We have two bulky attackers in Iron Hands and Gastrodon. And we have a support specialist in Grimmsnarl. Here we have the star of our video and that's Stone Journer. And I chose Stone Journer because of its ability, Power Spot, which grants a 30% damage boost to the allied Pokemon. The ability Power Spot just functions as a constant weaker Helping Hand. Helping Hand grants a 50% damage boost. Another reason to use Stone Turner is it's impressive bolt. I built mine to have max HP and max special defense EVs. I think the last four in defense. Even without any defensive EV, Stone Turner is a nightmare to knock out for physical attackers. It does struggle with special defense, even with the EVs, however. I gave Stone Turner all max IVs except for special attack. It's never going to be special attacking. I chose Terra-type Flying to give Stone Turner immunity to ground-type moves and to turn fighting type moves from super effective to not very effective. I gave Stone Journer the leftovers item. If your opponent doesn't have a good special attacker, Stone Journer is not gonna leave the field, especially after a couple iron defenses stacked with leftovers. One of the reasons I chose against the defensive EVs is because I can just use iron defense. This increase in defense not only makes Stone Journer a physical wall, but it also boosts the power of body press. So Stone Journer can sneakily do a lot of damage. Wide guard protects Stone Journer's ally from dazzling gleam earthquake make it rain and a ton of other good spread moves in the format right now and last rock slide is great to break sashes or finish off pokemon it's nice if you get the flinch it's some nice extra damage that was the rockstar stone Turner build now let's take a look at the team that i built around it for the supporting pokemon i'm going to put the ev spreads in the description and i'm just going to touch on the highlights for each of them grim snarl's ability prankster gives priority to the wide range of status moves that grim snarl has access to Light Screen further boosts Stone Journer's special defense and helps it not get one shot. Parting Shot is great at weakening a threat and then rotating into a better option. Taunt is great at throwing off an opponent's setup or a strategy. If you see a Pokemon that you know that isn't going to be threatening, it's going to maybe use a Light Screen or reflect some other status moves. You just throw up a taunt and you can throw off your opponent's full setup. And lastly, Spirit Break for some damage and also still lowering that special attack. To further stack the damage boost on top of Power Spot, I give Dragonite the Choice Band item. Choice Band allows the use of only one move at the benefit of a 50% damage increase. My Dragonite is Terra type Normal, so that it can use Stab Extreme Speed. This allows Dragonite to hit for very hard with priority. A 30% damage boost from Power Spot, a 50% damage boost from the Choice Band, on top of the same type attack boost from Terrastalizing, makes Dragonite's extreme speed close to one-shotting a lot of Pokemon. So I use Dragonite with Stone Journer when I think I can be aggressive and just run through a team. Next is another choice item user, it's Goldango. Now originally I gave Goldango the choice specs, which gave a 50% damage boost to special attack, but I found that Goldango was getting outsped too often, so now we have the choice scarf. The choice scarf boosts the holder's speed by 50%, but also locks the user into one move. And Goldengo has some powerful coverage moves to choose from. It has Stab Shadow Ball and Stab Make It Rain. It can also go with Thunderbolt or Power Gem. Like Dragonite, Goldengo is very fast and hits very hard. It can overwhelm the opponent with the extra damage from Power Spot. Unlike the previous two Pokemon, Gastrodon wants to play the slow game. Gastrodon pairs really well with Grimmsnarl's Parting Shot. Grimmsnarl can use Parting Shot, lower the attack and defense of a Pokemon, and then switch out into Gastrodon to make use of the Storm Drain ability. The Storm Drain ability also protects Stone Drainer from water type attacks that would otherwise be super effective, while also raising Gastrodon's special attack. Gastrodon could also play the role of speed control for the team, using Icy Wind to slow down both of your opponent's Pokemon. After a Storm Drain or two, Gastrodon can actually hit for some pretty decent damage as well. 
And last but certainly not least, it's Iron Hands. I went with a sword dance build here with my Iron Hands. I was between Fake Out and Protect. I'm still on the fence. I like the lasting utility Protect, but I just can't get enough of the pressure provided by Fake Out. I have Drain Punch, which is a great stab and allows Iron Hands to recover health, and Thunder Punch for the electric stab. I give Iron Hands the booster energy to boost the attack, especially because I did not max out the attack EVs. That's enough talk, let's see this team in action. Now bear with me, the audio did not save, so I'm recording this after the fact. Immediately turn one, I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to terrestrialize right away, because I'm expecting an earthquake. I end up going for the fake out to flinch, that way I can get a turn of iron defense, and then save the surprise. I'll just delay the earthquake by a turn. Here comes the terrestrialization. Rock Slide hit Talon Flame for times four and get some more damage onto Iron Tusk. All right, so we'll be in a seat here. Okay, excellent. He's just doubling, just doubling down with the Grand Terror type. It's gonna be swinging with either Headlong Rush or Earthquake. Luckily, Stone Journer is Flying type, so it's, we're not really too concerned about it. So we're just hoping that Stone Journer is getting targeted and so we get a free attack this turn. We already got the iron defense up. Alright, so Talon Flame goes into Iron Hands. Feeling good. I did read the Earthquake correctly. Stone Journer is safe. Unfortunately, Iron Hands is less than safe. He may be bulky, but not bulky enough. Now we have the Rock Slide, and yes, knockout number one for Stone Journer. That's hitting Talon Flame for times four weakness, that's huge. So I came into this match with actually my more aggressive team. So Dango and Dragonite, the choice users, and then Iron Hands. So I'm not thrilled to see the Iron Bundle being four times weak. Alright, we need a knockout. Not quite, even with Power Spawn the Choice Fan. Breeze Dry, that is gonna knock out Dragon Knight. Because now I'm down to Gold Dango and Stone Gurner. But luckily, Stone Gurner will finish off Iron Bundle, taking its second knockout in the map. Golden Go has the choice card, so hopefully we'll get an attack off. But Great Tusk is too fast with Headlong Rush. So now it's left to Stone Gurner. And all I'm going to be able to do pretty much is just Rock Slide him and both. So Monk is at 4 to put me to sleep. Leaf Storm for some damage. Rage Powder, it's not really going to matter here because I'm just hitting the boat. And at this point, I can tell that Iron Tusk has Protect, Headlong Rush, and Earthquake. So it's shown three moves that it has. It can only have one other move, and it, unless it's Stone Edge, I, the Stone Dirt is going to really have a hard time getting knocked out. Because as you'll notice in the health bar, I'm fast forwarding through the leftovers, but after every turn, I'm healing with that leftovers, and... My opponent is not putting damage on a Stone Drainer. Alright, there we see the fourth move is close combat, and because of the flying terror type, that is going to be not very effective. That is going to weaken the defense. So, I definitely fast forward in this battle a lot because there's a lot of Stone Drainer being asleep, getting hit for a little bit, and then leftovers healing, and brick by brick, and we're just going to keep on going. So at this point, I'm not so sure that my opponent has the moves to knock out Stone Gunner. After one iron defense, it just takes so little damage from a not very effective close combat.
Amoongus is not very powerful. And Stonehenge is just gonna grind this one out. It's not the prettiest gameplay, but it demonstrates that given the right situation, Stone Turner can just be so difficult to deal with. I love it as a support, but look, it's both with Terra type flying. It's incredible. And we have the knockout on the Great Tusk, yes! That's three knockouts for Stone Journer, just one on one. And I don't think Amoongus can do enough damage, it's only a matter of time. I'm a 64, but I'm healing every turn. Let's see, still asleep, no crit, no crit, okay. And it gets weaker and weaker because Leaf Storm lowers the special attack by two stages of the user. So at this point, Amoongus is at minus six special attack. And that is going to do it. Stone Journer, four on one ranked battles sweep. There we have an example of Stone Journer getting the job done, showing that it's more than just a support Pokemon, showing that its bulk is legit. With Terra-type flying and the item leftovers, opposing teams can have trouble knocking Stone Journer out at all. Stone Journer really shined as a support Pokemon, using that power spot ability, wide guard and buffing up its teammates. In the right situation, Stone Journer can hold its own. This has been a really fun Pokemon to experiment with on teams, and it will for sure be using Stone Journer in more ranked battles in the future. Is Stone Journer on any of your ranked battle teams? If so, let me know your Stone Journer builds in the comments, or let me know if you try out Stone Journer because of this video. And if you're still watching at this point and you like the content, Drop a comment, drop a like, send this video to a friend. Make sure to rock slide that subscribe button for more Dan Squared. Thank you for watching. This has been The Case for Stonejourner.